Mm. Okay, so we can move on to presentations. Hi, good morning, commissioners, Fire <laughs> Chief Crowley, City Attorney. Also, LAFD administration and honorable guests. I'm Eric Scott, Captain 2 paramedic, serving as a public information officer. And today we're recognizing our talented members who rescued a hiker in Temesco Canyon and due to their astute observations ended up saving his life despite that individual not wanting to be transported. So I'd like to invite up our mm -hmm. members here starting with Pilot 1 Scott Keelan, Firefighter uh, paramedic and aeromedic Dominic Marquis, Captain 1 paramedic Michael McKindo, Firefighter paramedic Jesse Beck, Firefighter Patrick Mandich, Firefighter dispatcher Anthony Zermano. Now, the incident took place on a beautiful Saturday morning of June this year where three friends began to hike up Temescal Canyon. That's a trail above the Pacific Palisades uh, coastline. It was a warm day and about 70% humidity. Now, as the group returned to the trailhead, one of the, the hikers began to feel weak and dizzy, and they were unable to continue. Now, the episode was significant enough that his friends who were with him uh, called 911, and our Metro Fire Communications received the call and quickly dispatched all of these members standing behind me. Now, they began their arduous hike up that trailhead to the canyon with the appropriate uh, equipment and medical supplies. But for any who, who has worked in Temescal Canyon, due to that topography, there's poor radio reception and lack of distinctive landmarks, it makes our communications very difficult. And in turn, it makes it difficult to uh, ultimately locate the patient. So fortunately, our firefighter dispatcher opted to remain on the cell phone with the 911 callers and in, ensure that even though we had spotty cell reception, they would guide our rescuers to the patient. Now to make things more challenging, they also had spotty radio communications. Mm -hmm. However, that was overcome by our uh, experienced captain who hiked up to a location. He knew he would have better line of sight directly with the helicopter coordination and also the incident commander down below and began to relay that information as necessary. So eventually they did come to our patient. It was a 55 year old male hiker. He was uh, complaining of dehydration, dizziness, nausea and difficulty walking. So our firefighter paramedics, uh, they started an IV, they gave uh, plenty of fluids, they began various cooling measures. And although the patient's condition fortunately started to get a little bit better, uh, he then just wanted to walk out on his own and asked to do so. But uh, instead, our members executed a successful hoist of the patient out of that hot and rugged terrain and safely into the back of our helicopter. Now it was actually at that time that their medical concern for the patient was confirmed. So on board of Fire One, a 12-lead EKG revealed that the hiker was experiencing a STEMI. That stands mm -hmm. for ST elevation, myocardial infarction, or in layman's terms, these talented paramedics, they skillfully read that patient's heart rhythm, they recognized he was having a heart attack, and swiftly transported him via air ambulance to the appropriate medical facility. So despite the hiker's initial desire to want to walk out, our members astutely identified the severity of the condition and ensured safety by hoisting him out and saved the man's life who was having a silent heart attack. So at this point, we'd like to go ahead and read one of the certificates. It says, in recognition of your heroic courage, diligent efforts, and expedient assistance in saving a man's life during a hiker rescue emergency on June 22, 24, on the Temesco Canyon Trail above the Pacific Palisades of Los Angeles, the Los Angeles City Fire Department commends you for your bravery and exceptional efforts in saving a citizen of the City of Los Angeles. Presented this sixth day of August, 2024, Kristen M. Crowley, Fire Chief. Let's give him a round of applause. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, all of you, for all your service. That was a remarkable work that you did. I really commend you for convincing the walker that he could not walk out. It was a man, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> that he could not walk out. Because I know oftentimes people, when they're ill, say, oh, no, I can do it. I can do it. 
But thank you for recognizing the need to really convince this person that he needed to needed your help. And uh, that's a very valuable uh, tool that you have, your training there. Uh, and uh, I thank you very much for your service and uh, continued success. And to the LAFD, continue training and providing the services that we need. And that's why we're considered the best, because you guys do the work and make everybody look really great. I know you do it all the time, but sometimes there are unique times that make you stand out and it's above the call of duty that makes it work and look good, uh, better, not to you necessarily, but to us. <laughs> because you say, oh, that's just my job. But your job to us is a miracle working. And we really appreciate that service that you provide. Because who, who knows? It may be me next. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Commissioners, anyone else? If I may, ma'am, um, just real quick. You look at the individuals standing there, and this is the last thing they want to do, by the way. They do not want to be recognized. They're, they're smiling, sort of. But in the end, just uh, to the members of the LEFD as a whole, this is what our people do every single day. To these uh, members right here, they're like, bah, we got it. We're on to the next one. But just know that that input and the experience that you're bringing, the influence to the community means a, a lot. So just to bring you up here, just one little small thing that we can do to recognize you for what you do each and every day. But that's what happens. That's when the magic happens. When you have the right people with the right training and the right resources, you have the right outcome. And we often don't make that connection. So just thank you for being the professionals that you are, from the dispatcher doing the right thing to our members doing the right thing to having the right resources and getting the person where they needed to go to save his life. So mm -hmm. uh, on behalf of the LAFD, we're super, super proud of all of you. Keep up the amazing work. We're going to keep fighting for you, getting what you need uh, to do your jobs and to go home to your families. That's what it's all about. Uh, do we have any family members that are here? Please stand, and we'd like to recognize you as well. Thank you. Thank you for being here. That's a constant reminder to us that that's what it's all about, is taking care of our families as well. So thank you to the, the members here. We're super proud and uh, looking forward to seeing what else you can do. Thanks. And to the families, I say thank you also, because without your backup and filling in, it may, oftentimes the firefighters could not do the job they do with the comfort and relaxation that they can just concentrate on doing their job. So thank you very much for your backup. Thanks for being here, too, today. All right. Want to do a quick photo? Does the family want to be in the picture? Mom and Dad. Mom and Dad. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>